Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord also told us to wear purple. You know this? Praise the Lord. Because I had another outfit and I changed the last minute. Amen. Yes. Um, it is all God. It is all God. We've had such a. Um, there's another service before Christmas, right? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And I could come back. Yeah. <laughs> well, Christmas Eve Sunday, instead of doing it now, Christmas Eve Sunday, we are going to do Jesus Christ is coming to town. Oh, good. All uh, right. I was going to do it today, but I feel that I uh, we've had such a wonderful uh, 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 service. I ain't going to spoil it now with the Christmas. Uh, not that it will be spoiled, but you know what I mean. Yes, yes. Uh, all right. Okay, so I'm going to go straight into the word, Amen. which uh, today you might, you might, um, it might seem a little strange when I start, but I want you to trust the man of God. Amen. Amen. And uh, I'm going to take you nowhere that you don't want to go. Uh, <laughs> right. But as long as you stay with me, you will get the message. Uh, today, Amen. 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 Let me find it here on the on the technology. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, because you're my God. You're my Redeemer. You put these words in my mind and in my head and in my tablet and we know that when your word goes out it does not return to you for it. so father we pray that your word will fall on good ground yes amen. 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 jesus name we pray amen, amen. 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 and amen amen, amen. amen. um uh, i don't need my water but that one is nearly empty I did. praise the lord um I felt led today to continue to speak to you and challenge you in the area of being a servant and service delivery. How many of you were here last week? Let me see your hands. Right. Okay. So all of you, thank you, sir. All of you got the, um, what was last week? Service. 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 Right? You want to be a sheep or a goat? Sheep. 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 sheep of his pastor. Amen. Yeah. Right. So I felt um I felt led to come back to service. And also um uh, I want uh with his permission to give your pastor a rest. Oh thank God. So <laughs> the spirit tell me to come here Wednesday night. Glory. And yes. give you a practical seminar mm -hmm. on being a servant. Amen. Yes. 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 Be here. Yes. The, re yes. the reason why I'm going to do it Wednesday night is so you can ask questions and you can it can be participative. Is that yes. the right word? Yes. All right. So tell the other members who are not here, come out. On Wednesday night, because God wants to do a new thing. Amen. God wants to do a new thing. So that's the advertisement of, and the liberty of just taking to come by here Wednesday night. Amen. I praise the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, when I am not preaching, I actually conduct workshops and seminars on customer service mm -hmm. and other things and I cover subjects like service failure right mm -hmm. that means when you go to some place and the computer break down and they can't do it and the stove break down they can't cook that is known as service failure all mm -hmm. uh, right we shall have that in God's house no, no, yes. no, no, no. Um, we shouldn't 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 but I like to be. <laughs> right. But thank God there is something that I teach which is called service recovery. Oh, yes. Alright? Service recovery. But that's not for today. 
uh, 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 right? So with the knowledge that you all want to be sheep and not goats, I will present the subject for today from a different perspective. And the title of my message today is Service Through Innovation. Service Through Innovation. Now what does innovation mean? Um, right, to define it, we can use some other words um, like novelty, right? Modernization, improvement, or originality. But the word that I like faster is creativity, oh, yes, yes. right? Now, I have been privileged to see and experience many innovations over the past several years because I've been on this earth for a while. Uh, you too, you too, Pastor. Amen. Right, so you, you can go with me on this. So I want to share a few of those innovations that came into my mind and my spirit when I was uh, preparing this message for you. The fax machine mm -hmm. <laughs> was a great invention, but it came and went just as far. Yeah, right. true. Yeah. It was replaced in due course by the photocopying machine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Copies, the young people might not know this, copies at first were called Xerox copies. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And they were called Xerox because that was the name of the company yes. that was spearheading the technology at the time. Yes. So we Belgians used to say, same as Xerox copy, no? Uh -huh. the, the, they used to say photocopy. Yes. <laughs> These have been replaced by the scanner. Uh -huh. I heard somebody just mention it. Yeah. Yeah. But the scanner itself has been superseded by the scan app on your phone. I have a scan app yeah. on my phone yeah. that I scan it and email back to the people immediately. How many of you ladies used to use a typewriter? Let me see your hand. Right, typewriter. So you know about carriage return line fee. Yes, yes. Hurt up your hand, right? <laughs> stay with me, stay with me. Yes, yes. The typewriter was replaced by the word processor. Yes. Which was replaced by the desktop computer and several handheld computers and accompanying printers. Yes, my Lord, yes. We do not have to connect the computer to the printer with a long cord anymore. <laughs> because we can print from a remote printer, which may be in another room using wireless technology, all right? Yes. True. Yes. Print yes. from your phone. Yes. Right? Want you to see where you're going with this. Young people there really. The young people with me? But the young people that get hit now. The young people that get hit now. The rotary phone. It coming up on the screen yet? That's right. The rotary phone. How many people here use the rotary phone? Yeah, all of us do it. Right. Sorry, you're gone. <laughs> the rotary phone, brothers and sisters, was replaced by the touchstone phone, yes. which was replaced by the cell phone, mm -hmm. which itself has been replaced by the iPhone and the iPad. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> now, who here? Show your hands. Remember when you had to dial the operator when you wanted to make an overseas call? Of course, I remember that, yes. And you used to have to wait long, too. Yeah. Yeah. Young people didn't know about that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 But today we can 
can do it ourselves on our cell phones. I can call my son in, in California right now if I wanted to. Okay. That's right. We can now see people far across the world as we talk to them using FaceTime, Skype, WhatsApp, Zoom, Twitter, and more. How many of you can remember when we used to rub salt in meat and hang up the Christmas ham in the shed roof to preserve it? Um, <laughs> how many? How many here know about? Yes. Salt, we have the thing called brain, right? The older people will know this, the young people getting a history lesson. Amen. <laughs> but the refrigerator replaced the use of salt to keep meat for long periods. Yeah. Yeah. Then the oven replaced bricks. We used to cook from bricks. Yes. Sticks and coal. And that was replaced or overtaken by the microwave oven, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which has been sort of replaced by the crock pot, yeah. the electric cooker, the George Foreman grill, and now they got the air fryer. Lord help us. <laughs> Movies, news, and sports came into our homes when black and white TV was invented. And then that was replaced by color TV in heavy, vet, heavy boxes. But now we have HD flat screens that thin and, and not heavy. Uh, <laughs> right? And we have three-dimensional smart TVs and we could watch as much Netflix as we like. Brothers and sisters, are you seeing or feeling where I am going with this? Yeah, yeah. Armor of light, sisters and brothers. Every area of our lives and existence has been undergoing rapid change. Yes. Change. I ain't done yet. I flew in small propeller airplanes. Right? They didn't go very fast. But then the planes got jet power, yeah. right? And then the planes started getting bigger, growing into the jumbo jet, and air travel got faster, right? It went uh, 28 years ago, it went to twice the speed of sound on the supersonic Concorde. And, um, just by telling you, not fussing, I'm just giving you history. Yeah. Um, I had the pleasure of flying on Concorde 12 times. All right, so that's 12 times at twice the speed of sound. So on a regular conventional airplane, it takes eight and a half hours to fly from here to London. And then when you get there, you get a thing called jet lag. Right? But on Concord, we used to do it in three and a half hours with no jet lag. Right? Boats no longer have sails. Right? And cruise ships these days are larger than entire apartment buildings. The last cruise that I went with on my wife had 6,000 people on it on Royal Caribbean. Right, but when my mother traveled to England in 1955 on the SS Antilles, it took her weeks to get to Southampton in England, and I thought I would never see her again. Right now, we can sail to England in the same week. Yes, right. But who would have thought that the most successful innovation and business venture pastor? would be bottled water. We pay through our teeth for a drink of water. 
just because mankind has been able to contain it in attractive bottles, right? Saving us the need to get it directly from a river, a stream, a faucet, or as I did as a boy, a standpipe. That is known as innovation, brothers and sisters. Now, innovation is sometimes called out of the box thinking. This means that such thinkers are guided more by imagination yeah. right. than right. by memory. That's right. right? Memory ties you to the past. Yes. Yeah. But I want you to know that imagine that yes. memory ties you to the past. Correct. Right? But imagination points you to the future. Yeah. Yeah. You want me to say that again? Yes. Yes. Imagination points you to the future. Yes. Here's something else. Imagination is more powerful than knowledge. Ooh. Let that sink in. So far, I have spoken to you as a motivational speaker. Jesus. I do that as well. Okay. But you may be asking, what does all this have to do with born again Christians? Mm -hmm. I'm sure somebody saying, what does God to do with born again Christians? Mm -hmm. So being an ex-airline man, I tell you to fasten your spiritual seatbelts right now. <laughs> fasten your seatbelts. The world is changing. And it has been changing at a rapid pace. That's right. That's right. The only constant thing there is no pastor is change itself. Right. Yes, true. We are experiencing climate change. Uh -huh. yes. Although many people will not acknowledge that it is happening. That's true. <laughs> Florida used to be hot, but before I came down here, I had the heat on in the house because <laughs> it was cool, right? Climate change, right? And Barbados then get some snow one of these days, and y'all are wonder what's going on, uh, all right? Because the world is changing, and also we are in the end times. That's yes. another message. So for years, listen to me carefully, the people of God, so does us, yes. have been criticized, Pastor, for our lack of innovation. The phrase, hear the, hear the phrase, we never did it that way before. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Could be called the seven last words of the church. You know they got the seven statues of the cross. Yes. Yes. The seven last words of the church is we never did it that way before. <laughs> we Christians are better known for our traditions than we are known for our ideas. I hit it hard today, but this comes from God for you. We Christians do not like change. But COVID-19 changed the way we had to do church by restricting in-person meetings. Am I right? Many church leaders did not like it, Pastor. They began to think and to say, that the government was closing down the churches. They could not see the health implications and the need for service mm. to those who were sick and those who were likely to become sick. Mm. Those people that I heard saying things, I'm not being judgmental, but I no. believe in my spirit they were short-sighted. Yeah. And they did not ask God for wisdom. Some pastors 
lamenting the loss of tithes and offerings. Yes. Yes. Oh dear. Yes. 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 But hear me, church. God wanted to do a new thing. Amen. 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 And God forced Christians to embrace the technology that he had created. True. Yes. yes. True. Yes. True. Yes. That is true. Yes. Churches smaller than this one began to reach more people online in a month than they had reached for years. Yes. True. That's true. That's true. 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 That's true. True. I can remember back in the 60s when a few of us young converts, like the two of them and me, <laughs> <laughs> and musicians, converts and musicians, attempted to bring electric guitars and drums in the church. Whoa. <laughs> right? I am telling you, we were not allowed to do it. We had either to play the piano, because they didn't have them keyboards in, in them days. That technology didn't come yet. So we had to play the normal piano. We had to play a piano accordion. I'm sorry that I gave away mine because I had one. Piano accordion or organ, a trumpet or a violin. Right? In a world, listen to me carefully, of pigeons, we Christians had become statues. Lord help us. I hope you know the relationship between pigeons and statues. But, uh, but listen to me carefully. If the truth is known, we, God's people, come from a long line of innovators. Can I hear a name for that? We come from a long line of innovators. Now, the very first man, Adam, was innovative. Right? In Genesis 2, 19, we didn't uh, read that today, but we would read there where God presented all, everybody say all, all, all the animals to Adam. And Adam gave each of them a name for their kind. Yes. Yes. Now, brothers and sisters, Adam had never seen any of them animals before. True. True. Adam was creative. Uh -huh. Moses struck a rock in the desert and water came gushing out. Mm -hmm. Moses was the first man to use a tablet. We call it an iPad today, on which was written vital yes. information. The Ten Commandments was right. on the first tablet. That's right. It take me all of these years to get mine. Yes. <laughs> Moses led his people across the Red Sea on dry land. Right? Yes. What that was, brothers and sisters, was a man of God working through God the Creator. Amen. Amen. No, the shipbuilder mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. was the talk of the tongue. Everybody, the, the lashing in with the boy. What are you doing? <laughs> lashing. No one at the time had ever seen a ship pastor, True. far less what he was building. Mm -hmm. He was building an ark, and he was doing it at a time uh, when you, you study the history. There was no large amounts of water. There wasn't a river. People weren't seeing water. And rain was not falling. And he was building the ark. <laughs> then after, listen to me carefully, then after God sent him two of every kind of animal, no created ingenious ways to feed and care for all of them animals mm -hmm. as well as caring for his family. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Ingenious yeah. ways for all of them different animals. You know, mm. uh, if you grow up like me, uh, where you were feeding chickens and ducks and rabbits and things, you don't feed them the same thing. No. Or you don't even feed them, uh, you don't feed them the same way. And so on, all right? So if you could just imagine the task that this man of God dealt with. 
Right. Every animal that you could think, but you don't feed a donkey the same way you feed a chicken. No. And you can't give a donkey a uh, groin or laying there. No. You know, you, you have to. Uh, I just want y'all to, to see the men of God operating. Uh, all right? Now, listen to me. Noah had no training pastor as a capital, a craftsman, a shipbuilder a maritime captain, a manager, or a vet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No was the only vet in the ark yeah. with yeah. all of them animals. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But no, listen to me carefully, no had the anointing. Amen. Yes. I want to say that again. Amen. No had the anointing. And that set him apart from other men. Are you following me so far? Yes. You and I then as Christians have the same anointing. Yes. 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 That's right. That anointing is available to us every day and every hour of our lives. Amen. Amen. But listen to me carefully. Yet, we cannot find ways to reach the guys doing drugs on the block or we can't find ways to reach the LGBTQ communities to name a few I telling you all what the Lord tell me to say and those people need us to serve them some Christians who try to interact with those groups that I have just mentioned, interact with them so old-fashioned and judgmental mm -hmm. that many of them are driven to commit suicide. Yes. My Lord. Lord, help us. Because we're not, we're not showing them love. Yeah. We're not being innovative in how we reach them. Yeah. Back to God's men. Joshua walking around the walls of Jericho was a bit out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. Now who would have thought that marching around a city for seven days and seven times on the last day and then start shouting loudly to make big, hard, strong walls of a great city fall down. <clears throat> but they did. Yes. Solomon's temple didn't come from Amazon or a coupon mail order. Solomon built one expensive building adorned with the best precious metal, stone, and timbers known in the then world. You know why, Pastor? Because Solomon asked for wisdom. Can we ask for some wisdom? We Christians need to seek God not only for wisdom, but then for understanding That's right. if we are to be servants in this changing world. Amen? Amen. We are children of the Creator. He wants to work through you and me today as he did in times past. God is not a God of the status quo. Mm -hmm. And as I say that, um, there, that is not contradictory to what we said that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God don't change, but he don't have to look in a manual to find out what to do because he's the creator. Amen. 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 Uh, 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 right. But God always likes to do something new That's right. and something innovative. Amen? Yes. 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 Let me go to Gideon. Gideon's army of 300 men used trumpets, jars, and oil to defeat 135,000 of their enemies. Anybody here know about odds? Mm -hmm. 300 against a herd. 35,000 pastor, right? I hear this. Hear this if y'all read this in the Bible. 
They did not have a single sword. Yes. They didn't have an AK-47 or an AR-15. Mm. No guns. But I am sorry to say there are a lot of Christians in the place that I can't mention who love their guns. Lord help <laughs> John the Baptist John the Baptist had a wardrobe that has not caught on yet. That's right. <laughs> and I doubt whether his wardrobe will catch on. But John the Baptist's message of repentance. Yes. And his work, Pastor, has been reproduced through the ages because John was creative. Yes. John was innovative. Right? I come down the line. Samson realized that the jawbone of an ass could do more damage than a sword or a knife. He tore down the gates of Gaza. <coughs> no, does that name ring a bell to you? Yes. 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 Because that's the same Gaza Strip that are in use today. Yes. Uh, yes. Are, are right? Yes. And if you read the Bible and you understand it, Gaza never belonged to Israel. Mm. Read the Bible. Samson left Israel and went down the enemy territory in Gaza and take off the gate. He also saw a woman that he shouldn't have seen, but that's another I think. But but brothers and sisters, read your church history, read your Bible, listen to the news, and God will speak to you and let you know that, that he's coming. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Samson went down to the Gaza Strip. Right? Elijah could oversee the destruction of Baal and his prophets. He used fire to burn wet wood, which is not an easy feat. No. True. <laughs> but then he became so scared by an evil woman yes. that he outran a horse and chariot. Yes. Lord, preserve me from evil women, because yes. I don't know I could run that fast. <laughs> Brothers and sisters then, what I am sharing with you, utilizing biblical and natural history, is that, and hear me carefully, the spokesmen of God have never been ordinary people. The spokesmen of God have never been ordinary people. Right? With God, they achieve great exploits. And so can you and me today. Amen. That's right. Amen. You see, innovative thinking and risk-taking actions have always been mandatory for the job of man or woman of God. If you want to be a man or woman of God, you have to use your imagination. Yeah. You have to listen to the spirit and the yeah. spirit will speak into your imagination and you will do things that were never done yeah. before. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 You see, I believe that our creative God loves creative thinking. But such thinking, hear me, must be God-centered. It must be God-centered to be successful. And this is why I chose the scripture reading from Genesis 11. You probably realize that it was the story of the building of the Tower of Babel. You want anything more innovative and creative than, than that? Eh? Right? It's a fascinating story. And one that has many lessons for the believer and for church <coughs> officials in particular. Don't just read past it. You see, those people had a goal and a mission. And so must you and I. Amen. That's right. If we do not know where we are going, 
we would not know when we get there that we got there. True. 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 That is true. Those people were doing something that was never done before. They had no manual. They had no path to follow. They had to innovate and be creative. Amen? Amen. So for you and I to be faithful servants of Christ and to be successful in our ministry, we have to be creative. Amen? Amen. Now notice that the people at the Tower of Babel were communicating with each other effectively, Pastor. Yes. And you see, such communication helped them to achieve the things that I have here. Uh, right, because they were communicating, they could develop understanding. Yes. Uh, they develop unity, mm -hmm. right? They develop motivation. Everybody was ready to go on the bike all over the tire today. I ain't able to lift the bricks. No, it was going. All uh, right, they develop innovation um, because that wasn't done before. Uh, where did they get the mortar and the cement from? wasn't invented yet, but they built that tower. Right. They developed creativity, and finally, and this is the very powerful one, because, Pastor, they were communicating with each other, yeah. they were able to transfer ideas, feelings, plans, and decisions that was vital for their success. Amen. Brothers and sisters, imagine how successful marriages, let me go there, then families, then churches, workplaces, and governments, imagine how they would be if only people would exercise understanding between each other and communicate and use their God-given creativity skills, work in harmony with each other, and motivate each other to achieve success. This is why the Bible says um, that one can route a thousand, but two can put 10,000 at a flight. When I first saw that in the Bible, I was fascinated. I was fascinated. This is not my notes. The Spirit says, hey, this is my head. I was fascinated by the Mathematics, right? No one, they got any school teachers in here? Or one was routing a thousand. But if you put one on one, it's there, yeah, man. Two. Two. But when you add the other person working in unity, your mathematical progression moves from one to 10,000. That is so powerful. And I wish more married couples would realize that two is routing. Amen. 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 And this, Amen. this me and my single Amen. thing Amen. don't Amen. work. Speak, Lord. But that's that's mm -hmm. sign up. Mm -hmm. uh, right, but it was happening here. Mm -hmm. uh, right, unity. Uh, uh, right. So as much as those attributes that uh, you see there were admirable and the building of the tower was becoming a great success. There was one major problem. Years ago, when we went up to the, uh, I tell you, Susan, Houston, we have a problem, right? Yeah. When the thing. There was one major problem, Pastor. And the problem was that the people of Babel had left God out of their yes. plans yes. and their innovations. Mm -hmm. God, God. So, Tell us that he's a jealous God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. The tower was being built to glorify them, yes. not God. Uh -huh. And so God came down and put a stop to the operation. So whatever you and I do, we, it must be done to the honor and the glory of God. Or I am here to tell you that it's not going to last. No matter, listen to me, how innovative or creative you were, uh -huh. it is not going to last uh -huh. unless it is done for God. Amen? Amen. Now, what is fascinating about this story, Pastor, is that God could have sent an east wind. God could have done so. 
and blow it down. Or he could have sent a flood, but he did promise me yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. he didn't do it. As I was driving from Yorkshire and coming uh, down, there was a lovely rainbow over St. George. Lovely rainbow, and that reminds people yeah. today in the God. Well, the first rainbow was, 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 was the flood. Huh? I'll be seeing a rainbow today. A beautiful one was over there. Uh, all right? Okay. How did I get there? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, he could have sent a east wind or a flood, or oh yeah, flood rainbow, to wash it away. But instead, God took away their ability to communicate yes. with each other. Yes. Yes. Genesis eleven seven says, God speaking within the Trinity, He said, "Come, let us go down." and confuse yeah. their language yeah. so they will not understand each other right well when i'm functioning as a as a business speaker i do a whole seminar on communication based on this this bible verse because communication is extremely important yeah. right so they couldn't understand when there was no communication, Pastor, the enterprise failed. That's right. So it is today. But hear me. We still do not understand each other. We still do not communicate effectively, although we have so much technology. We got enough technology, but we still not communicate. Marriages are breaking down because the people don't talk, they don't communicate. Right? So if we as the people of God, listen to me. If we as the people of God do not find innovative ways to communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ to a changing world, we will have failed at completing our mission. We would have failed at service and we would have failed at making disciples for the kingdom of God. You see, brothers and sisters, God never changes. God's word does not change. But you and I can change how we present it. Amen. That's right. That's right. We give a blessing of rain. How we present it. You see, you and I can use technological innovations to reach millions who have not heard the gospel or who have heard and have not been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. You see, not everyone will come to a church building, right? In many of our churches, not only here in Barbados, but I have worked in St. Lucia, Antigua, and Trinidad, and it's the same thing, right? In many of our churches, wives cannot get their husbands to come to church with them. Most of the time. But we, the people of God, the servants, the sheep, we must find aware to reach those men pastor Amen. we must go out into what the bible calls the highways and hedges and find them we must go where they are they come in we gotta go and they bring them right we must go online god has given us that technology i hear this we must visit the rum shops yeah, oh dear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Tell, I didn't tell you to drink around my tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we must use the communication tools that these people use to reach them. Amen? Yeah. Amen. As I mentioned uh, earlier, had not for COVID-19, we would not have been doing church by Zoom and YouTube and other online platforms. Oh. Right? God brought that because he needed a shift. God the creator, the innovator. Right? Christians were forced 
to become creative. And as a result, many churches are reaching more people with the gospel, even people that they do not know. Remember last week, uh, my friends that came yes, said that yes. they were watching service yes. Yes. here yes. during COVID yes. and enjoying the service and being blessed. And they had said that they didn't try and find where this church is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then I arrived from Florida, tell them I coming down there. And Sister Rose said, I feel in my spirit, I got to come and cover you. I said, well, come, cover me. And they were here. You see, so, so yes. this is reaching. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. But this is technology Amen. creativity Amen. that is reaching um, our people. Um, all right? You see, the videos that are produced here go way beyond our reach here in St. Thomas. Right? So as a child of God, as a sheep of this fold, as a servant in his kingdom, this should make each one of you excited. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. But it's sound to us. Amen. You see, we must show the unsaved that the message of the cross is still relevant to them today. All uh, right? We, the people of God, are the children of the Creator. We are creative. It is inherent in our nature. Right? I always remind myself that we were all made a little lower than the angels. Right? We are gifted. Every one of you in here is gifted. Yes. Amen. Uh, Amen. Let me hear some. Y'all are gifted. Yes. Amen. 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 That's why Paul told Timothy, who he was mentoring at the time, he says, stir up that inner fire which God gave you. But y'all know the King James Version, which says, stir up the gift That's right. that is within you. I ask you today to regain the passion you once had. <laughs> Turn the mixer to whip. Whip it. And watch things happen. Amen. Amen. You see, because when God flexes, and wherever he flexes his mighty yes, muscles through local people like us, such movements of his spirit have Lord. always been preceded by innovation, never the status quo. And God has said, I am going to do. <laughs> I am going to do. A new thing. Hallelujah. Thank a new you, Lord. thing. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thing. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you. You don't know, but I'm the author of two books. And in my second book, I wrote, the book is called, It's Up to Me, How to Be a Winner. And I have a part in there that I write. If you do the things you always did, you will get the results you always got. Shall I say that again? If you do the things you always did, you will get the results you always got. When we share the gospel, and notice I say we, we share the gospel, there should be signs following. Yes, yes, Lord. You see, the multitude followed Jesus because of the signs and the evidence of his miracles. Because they follow me on a hungry belly, uh, Pastor. Yes. Miracles. So to those of you who had prophecies delivered to you last week, understand that they do not all happen immediately. True, that is true. But I'm here to tell you that they will happen. Amen. Yes. Right? They will happen. You see, I have been the recipient 
and the beneficiary of more than one prophecy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, my mother, who has dementia, uh, who talks foolishness most of the time, looked at me two weeks ago and prophesied. She told me I was going to marry again, and she told me that um, I had that God tell her I got a lot of work to do. And the thing is that she, and then she tell me how she went to Italy and start talking more foolishness, all right? Um, so, you, you know, so I said to her, Mommy, uh, how come God talked to you and he didn't tell me that? But you see, God can raise up stones. He yes, can yes, yes, uh, do other things. So I'm here to say to you that prophecies were given to many of you um, last week. Take them seriously, uh, believe, and they are going to happen, Amen. right? But you have to change the way you view things. That's right. Be creative. Be innovative. Change first the way you view Jesus. Listen on my notes by just dropping my head. You see. If you view Jesus only as the son of a carpenter, you might be able to get a few cupboards or a house. Yes, 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 yes. yes. But if you view Jesus as the son of God and the man of might and power, you can aspire to a mansion not only when you day, but one hand <laughs> You got to believe and change the way you think. That's right. Right? Because you are sons and daughters of God. Right? And I hear this. The Bible tells me that our father is rich in houses and land. You know what that tells me? Is that God ain't got the bank account. God deals in real estate. Right? And because real estate don't mash up. But don't let me go there right now. I try to change the way you think and the way you see things and the way you see Amen. Yes. Amen. So as I close, these are my last words to you. Take that leap of faith. That's right. It is a leap. You, you, you don't step out in faith like you're stepping on a shell. You leap. Take the leap of faith. And then speak the language of faith. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. David, David, look at the giant. Yes. Giant, nine feet tall. David ain't taller than me. And he holler, I don't kill you. I don't yes. mutate to the birds. I don't yes. mash you up. He yes. trash talk. Yes. Yes. But that was a trash talk. And that was the language really? of faith. Yeah, right. you, you see, you, you answer the price. Philip, then you come here from all people. Language of faith. Yes. Can you talk like that? Yes. So speak the language of faith as you witness, as you testify, as you serve, and as you make disciples. Right? Amen. Because time is short. Correct. And when your turn for rewards come, you want to hear Jesus the Christ say to you, Well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Yeah. May God, the creator of heaven and earth, bless you really good today. Yeah. 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 I think we could do better than that.
And Gladys recorded. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. And Gladys recorded. That's right. That's right. That ain't go over it. Shoot it. Action must come for what we pray. Yes. See any action? What did he say? What did he say? Thank you. Thank you. A leap of faith. I am not going to be able to meet my bills this month before I get here. That is not in language. No. Someone will know the head right now. So by the grace of God, I'm going to make it. I mean it. Oh, praise God. Oh, hallelujah. This is very motivational. But we gotta take the action from there in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us on Zoom. And those who will see this video in the future. My prayer in conclusion is that we will be willing to make the change. Willing to make the change. And it has been emphasized today that we carry the same, we carry the same anointing, we carry the same anointing as those who have been successful. So I'm going to close in a word of prayer for the video. And I believe that some of you would want to be included in the prayer. I want to. Father, we thank you again for caring for us so much. Taking care of the things that we didn't even know would happen. You love us immensely. Thank you for making a way where there was no way. Thank you for sending this man of God. Thank you, Lord. To sharpen us uh -huh. that we can go forward in a powerful way. And whoever is experiencing this video, we encourage you to lift up your head and believe God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And take a leap of faith and see what the Lord will do in the name of the Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you. Thanks. As for somebody who has never given your life to Christ, we encourage you to do so because you've heard. So this word today, that it matters not how innovative you are and you don't have the favor of God, it will come down. So we give God glory and we give God praise and we pray that you will surrender your life to Christ in Jesus' name. And the people say, Amen. 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 The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord cause his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Now and evermore. The people say, Amen. 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 For prayer and counsel in your walk with God, please email us at armoroflightbarbados at gmail.com. Thank you. And may God bless you.